Hey everyone, this is Mark with the Aquatic Nature Studio. So you've gone away for a little while and it's time to actually work on your aquarium once more. So where are you in your layout? Is it time for you to detail? Is it time for you to maybe make more changes? Well, if you're gonna make more changes, you probably do it now because I'm gonna jump into detailing. I'm gonna show you some tips, some tricks, some things that I like to do and some things that you should start doing so that you can better develop your layouts. Let's get that going. So before we go, I want you to just take a quick look at the aquarium the way that it is right now. You're going to notice that there's a lot of condensation that's developed on top of the glass. And the reason for that is because I have put saran wrap to cover the top of the rimless aquarium. And this allows the aquarium soil to retain its moisture and its properties that you've purchased it for while you go away and are thinking about what your layout is going to be turning into next. So I'm gonna just let you see that real quick and then we're gonna continue on from there. So you've gone away for a little while, you're coming back to your tank, you're looking at it, you've established whether or not you're happy with it. And at this point in time, you've now decided, okay, I think I wanna start detailing things. So before you jump down that road, let's start nitpicking the critical elements already in this layout, which are the secondary and the primary stone. Let's look at that layout, see what tweaks we can make to it to enhance it even further before we take the initiative to fully detail everything. So one of the things you're gonna notice about this layout, the stone over here, while it looks good from a distance and from a photographic perspective and from the camera's angle, when you actually zoom in on it, you're gonna notice that there is a cut in that stone. That, that cut we actually wanna hide. We don't want that to be exposed because that's actually gonna be detracting from the layout, especially when you have another angle of the layout. Um, so I'm going to go take a hammer and chisel to it. We'll knock that piece off. We'll hopefully not destroy the rock because that is always a possibility. And we're going to swap this stone out and we're gonna make that change right now. Okay, so we're back and I've now chipped at my piece and it essentially it looks something like this. I knocked off this little chip over here so that once it actually goes into the aquarium, what you're gonna see now looks more like this is the final edge of the stone. So I'm gonna now put this into the aquarium right this second. So now that we've made that change, let's look at some of the other stones in this layout. And at the moment, everything is moving in a disjointed, uh, manner between the two sides, the left side of the, of the layout and the right side of the layout. And this is because we have the striata pointing in one direction, the striata pointing in the other direction. We create this X shape, which is causing tension, which I mentioned earlier. So in order to preserve the tension in the layout, but also to bring the two sides together more harmoniously, we need to add in an element that's going to be moving towards the left of the aquarium but we want to do it on the left side so the keystone that i have tasked with this duty is actually going to be the one that we have in the front here this secondary stone so i'm going to try and play around with this a little bit and hopefully not destroy the layout let's go And also, if this isn't working out, you may actually need to substitute stones once again. So I'm gonna think about playing with some other pieces that I have here available to me. So at this point here, I have now moved around a bunch of the stones. Um, and essentially what ended up happening was these two stones needed to be flipped around. This allowed me to utilize a smaller piece in this area. I actually had much larger pieces that I didn't actually think would benefit me if I broke them down. Um, in this case, this stone is actually kind of exactly what I'm looking for. It's replicating some of the textures from that side. And again, I'm playing around with these elements. So it's not only about the striata, it's about the texture. So this rock is softer, primary stone is softer. This 
uh, other secondary stone at this point. This is another softer stone. And then this one, as well as this secondary stone, those are a bit more jagged in appearance and it actually kind of ties more of this together. So at this point in time, what I'm also gonna be doing is I have some powder soil. I'm going to be removing the substrate at the foreground, pushing it more to the back, uh, so that way I can build up kind of the area back here more, uh, infilling a lot of these gaps that I've now created in some of these areas. And it's gonna make planting a little bit better. You'll see that this now slowly kind of becomes a mound and the plants will then slowly be pushing out of this area. So I'm going to quickly transition over to powder soil and then I'll jump back again. Now at this point, I've added in the powder soil for this left side of the layout, and I'm building up this central area over here. Now, to let you into what my planning scheme is going to be and where, well, how I'm making my decisions here, in a typical uh, layout, you'd find that people would create kind of like a bit of a, a sandbar, which in the case of the sandbar, it would drift to the rear and it would vanish into the distance. But what I want to do here is something a little bit different. So I want to take something here from the world of Dutch layouts. The rule in the Dutch layout is that you have a carpeting plant that starts at the foreground at its widest point. And that's going to be this area over here. Now this foreground plant tapers in that it gets shorter it starts to shrink in its overall area it gets taller so we increase it and what you would normally do is you create kind of like a street and what you would find is like these start to ramp up into the layout and these streets will then their infinity point as they call it which is the point where it seems that it will go on forever that infinity point disappears behind stem plants now this is all going to sound maybe like words to you but I'm going to develop this a little bit further. I'll come back and I'll explain how I made those changes. Now I have some tweaking still to do in this layout. Um, what you're going to see, I've added in the powdered layers. I brought it into the mid-ground and I've actually extended it into the background there. And the reason for this is that I plan on using carpeting plants and that carpeting plant is gonna recede into the background. Now, my goal at this moment, I have to figure out how do I extend this mound out and then I'm gonna put in some finer details. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so now I've finished my soil. I've made the mounds how I want to. I have my vanishing point in the area that I'm looking for. And I'm now moving on to some finer detailing. Now, just think of yourself as, again, going back to being a painter. You want to start with macro details, meaning larger details, and you want to work your way to micro details and the finer details. So something to address right now, there's a blank area over here, which is empty. We can address that by putting in some larger stone, but still smaller than the others. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here because it's going to texture the ground, but not actually create mass above it. And you're going to do that by laying this deeper into the soil than you normally would when you're exposing things like the larger stones. Let's do that. And so there you go. So now we've added another layer to this, which is now, when you do this, what's happening is you want to think in your planting as you're making these kind of choices. So this piece is actually going to just remain just exposed after the carpeting layer fills itself in. Uh, we're going to detail and accentuate this area a little bit further with some smaller pieces, but for the most part, we're now in a pretty good spot as to what we've done over here. Um, something also to address, so when you're trying to create a scale in your layout, it's always good to think about these larger elements and how they're interacting with one another, but also you want to think about in the background. So what is something that would be seen in the distance in a, perhaps a you know, 
we're gonna say this is a fantasy layout, but in this fantasy landscape, what would be seen in the distance that would be complementing this? And that's actually something as simple as just another rock. And you know, this piece is actually perfect. I have another little uh, piece that broke off that we could accentuate this a little bit further. And this is something that I just saved from when I chipped that last stone over in the corner. And I'm gonna give that a little bit of a play in the background and we'll see how it goes a little bit further. And so that's looking pretty good right there. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna continue with this. Again, now the vanishing point, the decision that I've made here, vanishing point is actually gonna take us behind these secondary stones and behind the stem plants even further. So this is actually gonna come forward. It's gonna have a little sway to it and then it's gonna kick right and disappear at that infinity point or that vanishing point. So with that being said, I'm gonna add in some micro details. Now I have some stones here that are going to be of a more boutique variety. And all that really means is that the pieces are just nicer looking pieces. They're not just, you know, cut ends that are jagged and, you know, you, you're, they just look like they've been chipped off a of stone. These are actually like nicer weathered pieces. Most likely they were collected at the same location as the stones that I have here. Now these pieces are actually really good for further accentuating details. So kind of these like mini, mini uh, stone areas. I have larger pieces. I have, you know, smaller pieces. I have even smaller pieces. So this is something you just want to think about as you select some of this stuff and how you place them into the layout to further add texture to the landscape that you're creating. So something to keep in mind when you're doing the really tiny stones, you want to put them at collection points. So I'm going to show you how I'm doing that and I'm going to note it along the way. I'll explain at the end all the decisions that I made as well. Let's go. Okay, so now I finished my detailing. Take a look at everything digested a little bit. You're going to see that I've added larger stones into here. I piled it up, especially in an area like here. You're going to see that there's a mound that I've developed. It's mixed with the larger pieces, smaller pieces. But essentially, I'm trying to just indicate that there was some kind of rock slide or decomposition over time that caused like this fragmented effect over here. Um, I've kept that going with the detailing into the infinity point. I've primarily held it to this larger side. This area to me is how I'm interpreting it. Everything has receded in this direction. So this is the primary mass. This is where everything started. Over time, we've actually found separation going this way. So the rubble, in my opinion, is going to be emphasized over on this side. But again, this is how the narrative is that I'm going to be trying to tell here. So you can even do it a little bit further. You could put it anywhere where you want. But, you know, at the same time, you kind of don't want to overdo all of the details at the, as well. So you have some over on the right side to balance over what you did on the left side. And at this point in time, I think it's ready for planting and I'll make some maybe more adjustments and we'll jump into planting. So I'll do that. So that's the tank. That is where I'm gonna leave it with my details. I'm not gonna go any further. I don't wanna overthink this process. You did the details, you don't wanna pick them up. You don't wanna you know, start playing with them and, and now it's gonna start all of a sudden looking like it's a man-made uh, creation. You wanna keep it natural. You wanna keep it just flowy with uh, the layout. So that's it. That's all I wanted to share with you for now with detailing, how you make tweaks, you know, adding in some powdered soil to increase the effect of the foreground because they're smaller pieces if you didn't pick up on that. And with all of that being said, this is Mark with the Aquatic Nature Studio. I hope you like this content. Please leave me a like, leave me a comment down below, subscribe to my channel, and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Maybe you wanna tell me whether or not this was helpful for you, or maybe you wanna tell me some other tips on things that you could be using for detailing in a tank like this. So until next time, this is Mark with the Aquatic Nature Studio.